Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm here in my studio with my student Jen and she's brought in her electric violin. It's the NS, NXT electric violin. Great instrument and along with her instrument she's brought in her Boss ME50 guitar effects processor. It's a multiple effects processor. A really great entry-level model. Well known out there, a lot of people have this pedal. A big hello to the electric string playing community on Facebook and uh, out there on Twitter and Instagram. A lot of you were interested in knowing more about this pedal. So I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes just giving you some strategies around how to get started on this pedal. A lot of people buy a multiple effects pedal and they have no idea what to do with it. They just kind of plug their instrument in, scroll through all the different effects and uh, kind of find one that you know kind of looks, sounds okay and then they just play that. But they don't know how to really get into the guts of the pedal. And I'm all about getting a pedal and then getting into the guts and really making it work for you. You need to know these pedals were not made for the electric violin or the electric viola or electric cello, whatever you play. They're made for a guitar. And so all the tones, even the way the distortions dialed up, coursing, all of the various effects, they're made for the guitar. They're made for very different pickups. And so this pedal really won't work that great if you just go into the presets. But if you get into the guts and understand how the pedal works and then go from there and then build your patches around that, you're going to have a really great tone. And so I'm going to just give you some strategies around how to do this right now. When you get it turned on, it's going to be in what's called the manual mode. And the manual mode is basically you can turn effects on and off manually. You'll see each effect. And really this, this pedal kind of acts like a pedal board. You have a bank of overdrive distortion. You have a bank of modulation. And that would be all kinds of modulation. Flanger, phaser, chorusing, tremolo, vibrato, all kinds of modulation effects. You have a bank of delay. And it's just like having a delay pedal and all the various settings of the delay, analog, different timings, um, you know. And then up, up on the top level, you have kind of like a tone bank. And, and this is really like an EQ, but it's not a really adjustable EQ. It's, it's, just, it's just kind of presets. And then we have a compression, a compression pedal. And then we have uh, a noise suppression. And then we have a reverb. And so that's basically what this pedal has. Very easy to use. And then over here you have an expression pedal that you can use to do volume changes, wah. Really, it will, it will be set up for various parameters on this multiple effects unit. So it's pretty cool how this works. But I want to just show you how to get into the guts, how to set up your, your basic tone. And then you can kind of build everything on that. So uh, let's just start with, uh, with the basic tone. I'm going to get the violin now. I just want to see what this sounds like uh, with nothing. And let's just see if we've got some sound here. So we got some sound, got some good tone. I'm using a Roland AC60 amp. It's just a good stereo acoustic guitar amp that I've been using. And in terms of sound, you're just hearing the sound from my iPhone. 5S, so that's all you're hearing right now, nothing fancy. Okay, so. So this instrument has a great sound already, uh, the NXT. But um, I'm gonna just find now um, one of these tone settings that sound the best. I always start with the basic tone. Okay, how does the instrument sound on its own? You know, if I kind of call up the fat on this, it kind of boosts the lower end if I add, a, add the presence setting. Each of these are going to give you a, a, their own tone. When we were having a lesson last week with Jen, we settled on mild. It seemed to be the most natural. It was nice and warm. And uh, it seemed to be the most natural. I think it boosts the low end just slightly, but sounds great. And that's it. You've got your tone. 
but you can fool around with those. Some of these will give you more mid range. Now that's tight. That's more low, uh, more high end and low, less mid range. Enhance, I think, was more mid. Yeah. And then there's settings on here that don't have anything to do with the electric violin at all. They're more changing different kinds of guitar pickups and that sort of stuff. So you don't even need any of that. But the one we chose was mild. But you, could, you might choose one of the other ones. You might like one of the other ones better. Right? So that sounds pretty cool. And then the next layer that we add is compression. Now you need to know compression, it smooths out your sound. It makes your sound more sustained, but it also adds brightness to your sound. So you can't just throw compression on and then have it necessarily sound great because you might already have a bright setting in your EQ and then when you add compression it gets too bright. So you have to kind of be aware of what compression does. I think we had the sustain up maybe around halfway. I can't remember what we did in our lesson last week. <laughs> You'll notice it also boosts the volume a little bit. So you have to adjust the level so you get the same volume. And that's a little bit hot, so we're going to bring it back to maybe about 10, 10 o'clock on the, on the clock dial. That might be a bit too low, so we may kind of find it somewhere in between. Okay? So that's the next step is just throw the, the compression on, fool around with the sustain and level a little bit to get it around the volume that you want and also the tone that you want. Just talking about volume, important that on the instrument you, you have some good volume. If you've got really low volume on here and you really boost the volume on the board, like on the board there's actually a master volume. So a lot of people make the mistake of boosting the master volume really hot and then playing their instrument with a really low volume. And what that will do is just, you'll get, end up with a really noisy sound. So you want to do the opposite. You want to boost your violin. I put it at about uh, three quarters of the way. And uh, you want to bring your volume down on your pedal board to give, basically you're, you, you have a lot more headroom, it's called. And uh, that headroom will give you a cleaner sound. I'm not going to use the noise suppression because you don't really need it in this setting. You need it when you start adding distortion and overdrive because it starts getting noisy. So you want to suppress some of that background noise that's in the, in the signal all the time. So we won't use it. And then we'll add the reverb. We decided, I love all kinds of reverb, but if you want more of a retro sound, you could use the spring reverb. But I really like the hall reverb. And we dialed the hall reverb up at around 11 o'clock. Let's see what that sounds like. nice, eh? Yeah, that's nice. So we'll leave that. Now you're probably thinking, now what? We've dialed up a nice sound on the board, now what do we do? Well, a big part of my sound, I'm still not done yet, is delay. And so I always have a bit of delay in my sound too. So let's just see what this offers for delay. And we'll just turn it on. I like analog delay, but you could kind of call up any kind of delay here. But let's just call up the analog. You can hear a little bit of a ping back there. And just a tiny bit of delay might be a part of your sound. And that's really my, t my tone right there. I'm giving away all my secrets out there, guys. So here you go. It's the Trevor Dick tone. Tiny bit of analog delay added to reverb, compression, and dialing up the tone that I'm looking for, and there you go. Okay? On a good instrument, of course. Okay, again, we went in manually, we got the tone we're looking for, and now I'm going to write that. I'm going to write that tone, and to write it, you just hit write. That's easy, right? Pretty basic. And then you just hit the, the bank number that you want to write it to. Now I've already written a bunch of stuff here on Jen's pedal board into bank one and two, so we're going to use bank three. So here we are, I dialed up bank three, and then I'm going to 
call up the patch number that I want. So we're going to call up patch 1, and then I'm going to write there. Just push right again. It will blink a few times, and then it will stop. And now I've written that tone there. Let's just see if it's worked. So here's, here's the tone that I just created. I don't know what's in patch 2, so let's see, it's going to be something completely different. So that's like a preset that was already in the pedal board, right? But I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the patch I just created. And then we're going to use that as the foundation to build everything else. So the next step is to take the patch that we just created and you can just basically hit, um, what do we hit? Edit. That's it. Hit edit. And you can take any patch that you've already written and just edit it and save it somewhere else. So we've created a good quality patch. This is the strategy. Got it in the guts created a good quality patch and now we're going to take that patch and layer the other effects onto that good patch. Do you understand? And this is the strategy. You want to come up with the tone you like. If you start out with a bad tone, you're just going to have a bad tone. You're going to add distortion to a bad tone. You're going to add chorusing to a bad tone. Start with the sound you want and then add the effects to that. So I'm going to just save that. Actually, I'm going to just stay in this patch because I'm going to be able to save it. And let's add modulation. I really like modulation. I like all the modulation effects. And I happen to be a phaser fan. I you know, grew up listening to Jean-Luc Ponty and Jerry Goodman and some of these guys that were doing some really awesome rock fusion. And they loved phaser you know, back in the 70s. So let's dial up the phaser effects. So I'm going to call up. All you have to do is turn on what you want to use. And, and you can see there's all kinds of different modulation effects here. So I'm going to turn it to phaser. And let's just see what's already there when I start playing. And that's a really nice, fat, smooth phaser that we have. Okay, now you can just dial in the the various settings we got uh, rate how fast the phaser goes <laughs> that's very fast super wild like that. You know, but that's not going to be used in everyday, probably everyday performances, right? That might be more of an effect you want to dial up, but... phaser now again we built that on the sound and the tone that you want not we didn't just kind of find it as a patch and then go from there we developed the tone now we've added phaser to that tone and now we're going to save it we could push right again and then you call up the bank you want to write it on or not the bank the um, patch and then you just push right again and there we are so that's the strategy. When I talk on the Electric String Players page and on my YouTube channel, I say get into the guts of your pedal, figure out how it works, build your tone, 
and then add your patches to that. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. So that's just a real quick run through of the Boss ME50 today. I hope this is really helpful. Please comment below. If you have any other questions, please leave your questions below. Happy to answer any of those questions. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Again, keep playing, keep getting into those pedals, keep digging into the guts of those pedals, and uh, we'll catch you again soon. Thanks again, and a big thank you to Jen for allowing me to use her NXT and her pedal as well. And to her husband, Andre, who bought this pedal for Christmas. I think that's a pretty awesome Christmas present. So thanks again. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye.